thank you for watching the show Beef. Um, I am very appreciative of all the feedback and, and comments, and uh, uh, I, I'm excited to hopefully bring you season two. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I think mine is 77 inches, but yes, the same. <laughs> oh, I, uh, I really loved it because uh, it's, you know, to get the real deep black, it's very difficult with uh, most TVs. Uh, especially in rooms that are have light coming in, but uh, even in the daytime, uh, the the OLED, uh, the blacks are very very black, and the colors are are true to uh, the color that we uh, are looking at when we're color correcting. So it's very nice that there's no loss happening. You know, uh, we spend so much time in post production making sure the image is perfect, and oftentimes people when they watch on their home TVs, it's settings aren't correct and the blacks aren't that black. And so uh, it's, it's really nice to see uh, the image that created actually show up correctly. Ah, uh, yes, yes, four films that would look great on the OLED. Um, I think, well, definitely for sure, uh, Director Park's Handmaiden. I think that would look incredible on this. That, that has such rich colors. Uh, Yu Sung Hee, the production designer, um, you know, has such incredible sets, and I think the colors are so vibrant. Uh, I think that would look incredible on this. I think um, maybe director Bong's mother would look really great on this. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's some really wonderful night scenes in that movie, and then of course the mother dancing in the field. Uh, I would love to see that on the OLED. Um, I think uh, Paul Thomas Anderson's There Will Be Blood would look very good on this. Uh, you know, a lot of oil, a lot of rich blacks. Uh, and, um, and I think uh, Ari Aster's Midsommar will look very, very good on this because that movie actually has very little darkness. It's such a very bright um, movie, but he does such an incredible job of creating tension and horror in a bright environment. And I think with the contrast on, on the OLED, uh, um, that, that movie would look incredible. Uh, yeah, what scenes to watch on the LG OLED? Um, I think uh, episode nine scenes would be really nice. Uh, there uh, is a particular scene when uh, Jordan, uh, after she um, kind of gets crushed by a door, and then um, the whole uh, building's atmosphere changes, and there's fog, and the lights turn. Oh, here we go. Lights turn red, and. Um, that scene will probably look really nice on the OLED because there's a lot of rich colors that uh, will come through very well on the TV. And that goes into a lot of nighttime stuff uh, with, the, with the car chase and the escape. And um, you know, you really need good, good true blacks to uh, have that scene look good. So uh, I think the end of nine will, will probably be very nice on the LG OLED. Yeah. And then all of episode 10 too, uh, it happens in nature. And there's a lot of night scenes, and so a lot of the earth tones and those colors will come through very nice on the OLED, I think. And th this scene will probably look good too, the club scene, because it's very dark. Yeah, very good colors. Yeah. R the, the show is, uh, you know, loosely inspired by a road rage that happened to me. Uh, but, you know, uh, when I was experiencing it, uh, it was fu kind of funny because, uh, you know, I think cars are, you know, literal bubbles that we're all moving around in and um, we don't know what's going on in someone else's bubble and we always project and pretend to know and so I thought that was a very um, interesting, um, you know, microcosm for life in general and so, uh, yeah, and so that's why I sort of wanted to use road rage as the inciting incident and, um, but of course, it starts with anger and then the show becomes um, about a lot of other emotions as well, yeah. Yeah, we worked together on Tuca and Birdie, uh, but I actually didn't know Ali that well on Tuca and Birdie, because I was just one, one of many writers. Um, but I, I had known Steven for a very long time. We had been good friends, and so it was really nice to get to know Ali better. And, um, you know, I had never worked with Steven before. And so uh, it was definitely, we became very fast, close friends immediately. And I think having them on so early in the development of the show, uh, you know, they were on as executive producers even before we sold it to Netflix. And so 
I think that allows me as a writer to really craft the character specifically for them. And um, I think that's why it, the characters fit so well for them is that we constantly talked and we constantly collaborated. And um, it wasn't like me just alone writing and then I just hand it to them. They, a lot of back and forth ideas. And so I think that's really what makes these characters um, kind of have a little bit more spark to them is uh, our collaboration. So uh, it was very rare and very um, you know special uh, that uh, I know uh, on so many shows this doesn't happen. And so I'm very very grateful for for our friendship. Yeah. Ah, uh, the meaning of her smile. Um, you know, I I think we we really wanted to show uh, two people who. Um, don't have purpose in life and they are very lost inside. And I think um, this incident and, and this uh, person that she can now put all of her focus on gives her actually uh, a, a sense of purpose that she was missing and it's actually somehow um, uh, almost a happy, joyful experience. You know, even when they're running away and they're coming out of the house and she's running after him, they're laughing and smiling almost like they're, they're kids playing like a uh, tag or something. And so, you know, I think uh, sometimes in life, uh, even the most uh, darker or, or tragic things can sometimes inspire uh, um, purpose and meaning. And so uh, that's, that's what we wanted to show through that smile. You know, I don't even know that I was doing it intentionally. Um, you know, I, 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 I wanted to have crows as a symbol. Um, and then the witch was sort of based on uh, a lot of children's books that I had read growing up. And I guess just naturally, we, a lot of these symbols seem to have black in it. <laughs> um, so it, 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 uh, it definitely wasn't as intentional as I thought it was gonna be, but I was just picking things that from my life that uh, you know uh, I sort of resonate with in terms of um, whether it be the witch or the crows or the void or the ground. Um, and I guess for some reason all those things in life are black. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I think the feeling, the feeling that both characters are struggling with inside, you know, a lot of people call that feeling the void, uh, and so this emptiness. And I think, um, you know, uh, black in the absence of light definitely uh, uh, captures that very well. You know, it's funny, Steven's last uh, two movies also have a lot of fire in it. Uh, Minari has fire and Burning has fire as well. And so maybe in some ways this was finishing his fire trilogy. But yeah, no, I think, uh, you know, I think uh, similar to The Crows and The Black and everything, um, I think just naturally, I, I, a lot of the things I was gravitating towards seemed to have fire in it, probably because, um, you know, some, there's something about uh, the dis setting things on fire, the destruction of it, uh, that feels, you know, it's like the phoenix, you know, the phoenix burns down and it has to become ashes in order for it to rise again. And so, uh, you know, I think that, that sort of symbolism of fire throughout you know, ancient literature um, has that significance. And um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff I, I sort of, you know, I guess stumbled into. I didn't really, uh, I didn't start with the idea of like, oh, I want fire to be a theme. Um, it just kind of naturally happened. And so, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I think a lot of things in beef, it was just mostly just looking at my life and other people's lives and then um, trying to, put that into the show and then it just kind of almost organically becomes its own thing and its own themes start to arise. Uh, so I, I wish I could say I was really smart enough to uh, <laughs> uh, plant a lot of these themes carefully, but it was sort of uh, a little bit accidental, yeah. Well, when, when I first started developing Beef, uh, there was a quote by Carl Jung, the uh, psychologist, that I was sort of the guiding principle for the show. And his quote, he says, uh, one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. And so uh, I think I really wanted to write a show that where two people uh, were able to 
express a lot of the darker and ugly things inside and realize that, oh, they're actually the same. And in that connection of being able to almost look in the mirror and see someone that has all the same mistakes and flaws as yourself, but they don't, they're still, they're still there in the bed next to you at the end. Um, you know, I think that's a very, uh, you know, maybe one of the most powerful actions we can show another human being is uh, despite the, the flaws that you will still stand by them. And so, uh, you know, I, I think that that's something that uh, I, I know is very important in my life. And, and I think I, looking around, I see that we all need to try and show that more. And so, um, yeah, that's why, uh, you know, that was ultimately the real, like, you know, main message of the show. Yes, of course. Yes, I, I would love to. Yeah. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, thank you for supporting Beef and uh, hope to uh, see you all again soon. Thanks.